हेलो वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ कोर्स निपेट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ लास्ट वीडियो वेयर वी आर लुकिंग इन टू स्प्रिंग डेटा जेपीए तो इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव लुक्ड इन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ इट वी हैव अंडरस्टूड व्हाट इज जेडीबीसी व्हाट इज ओआरएम एंड व्हाट इज स्प्रिंग डेटा जेपीए नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू डाइव डीप इनसाइड जेपी आर्किटेक्चर एंड एंटिटी लाइफ साइकिल सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ फन वीडियो सो सेट बैक रिलैक्स एंड एंजॉय द शो सो लेट्स फर्स्ट गो थ्रू द एजेंडा ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो so this is basically the agenda so spring data jpa right so in the last video we have seen this introduction right so we have seen what is jdbc what is orm what is jpa we have understood everything right so the prerequisite of this particular video is basically go ahead and check that particular video so just a quick recap we have seen what is the jdbc connections right we have seen what exactly is orm right we have understood jpa and spring data jpa there right now if i come back over here then in this video we are going to look into jpa architecture and and entity life cycle right so implementing spring data jpa is very easy part right it is very easy you will have to write very less code in order to implement that and it is very straight forward right but what exactly is happening behind the scene that is something you need to understand right so that is why i am covering jpa architecture and entity life cycle over here in this video so here we are going to understand important concept inside jpa right we are going to get familiar with all the terminologies that we have over here so we will first see the architecture we will see life cycle and we'll understand the internals of jpa right so that is basically about your agenda right now let's get started now if i go to this canvas so if you remember in the last video we have seen this orm right so we discussed that this object which is a java object will be mapped to your table right so we were discussing that your java object will be mapped to the table inside your database right now when we define this java object which is a mapping to that particular table inside your db then this particular object is called as a entity it is basically a java object which is mapped to your relational database table right so when we look into jpa architecture let's start from entity which is a object which will be mapped to table inside your relational database right so in this video whenever we refer to entity just think of it as a java object which will be saved inside your table right for example if you go over here then i have sample project over here this is a e-commerce project that, that we have used multiple time inside this particular series right so you might be aware of it already if you are following so if you see over here you have this entity and for example you have this product entity over here right so this is how we define a product entity it is nothing but a plain java class these annotations and everything we are going to actually look into when we actually see the implementation right this is just an example of entity that i am showing you over here right it will just have fields like id name price description stock all of these fields will be there inside the table right so all these fields will be actually column inside your table and this will basically be the table name right so that is how so this is basically java object which will be a table right now how this entity will be saved inside your database so what is the journey of this entity to this database right so that is something which we are going to highlight over here right and there is a life cycle of this particular entity as well that we are going to look into so all these things that you see on this side is basically inside your application and your application is basically connecting to database right now this particular entity will be mapped to a table inside this particular database right how it will be mapped all these things comes into picture when we look into jpa right so as i already told you entity is basically the object which maps to table inside your database right this entity will be managed by a entity manager right so entity manager comes into picture over here another terminology entity manager right now what is entity manager as a name says entity manager is basically a interface inside java which is responsible for managing entities so whatever entities you create all of them will be managed by this guy over here think of it as a manager who manages these entities so inside your application you will have multiple entities all these entities will be managed by your entity manager so all the operations that you are going to do on this particular entity for example let's say save right or persist who will do that that operation will be done by entity manager so you will actually create an object of entity manager and you will say entity manager dot persist persist this entity right and all other operations like remove merge find all these operations will be maintained by this entity manager over here it is kind of a responsibility of entity manager to perform operations on entity right and who creates this entity manager basically entity manager factory is responsible for creating entity manager so entity manager factory will 
generally be one factory per application and which will be managed by persistence right so in your application the configuration will be managed by something called as persistence.xml right so that will basically create entity manager factory which will be one factory and it can create multiple entity managers inside your application which will manage all the entities inside your application right so this persistence.xml and everything is something which we define in jpa okay this is something which we do not need inside spring data jpa but in order to understand spring data jpa we need to understand jpa first and this is basically the architecture of jpa what happens inside jpa right because spring data jpa is just an abstraction on top of jpa as we have looked into last video right spring data jpa is just a layer on top of jpa internally it will use all these things only right it will use entity entity manager factory and everything right that is why it is important to understand that right so till now we have seen all these things right entity we know entity manager and entity manager factory and persistence right so this is this is basically this is also called as persistence unit right what we are going to do now let's uh, jump to the left hand side of it now next thing let's look into is persistence context right so this is very very important right what is persistence context right now think of a persistence context as a cache as a cache where these entities will be stored these entities will be stored here temporarily right inside a persistence context consider it as a bag inside which you have this entities stored on temporary basis and this guy entity manager is interacting with this persistence context to get those entities right to get those entities so to reiterate persistence context is kind of a cache where all your entities will be stored and managed right so this picture will be cleared more when we actually look into this particular entity life cycle right now let's say we have entity created we have stored it in persistence context this guy is ready and we hit something like persist right so what this guy will do entity manager entity manager will call persist right it will say entity manager dot persist and it will try to save this entity now entity manager is kind of an interface right entity manager cannot interact with database so what it will do it will have some kind of a provider provider do you remember from the last video we have hibernate or few other frameworks so if you see over here in the orm we have seen hibernate eclipse link or open jpa as a providers right so internally jpa will use hibernate if you see over here jpa will use hibernate right so what this guy will do this guy will offload the task of interacting with database to hibernate right now hibernate will have its own queries so hibernate will create queries right will have its own query language depending on what entity manager is asking or telling it will create the sql queries hibernate will create the sql queries and hit on the database and entity manager will also create the transactions so transaction also will be managed over here right so spring transaction is something which we have already covered so if you remember that video we have already talked about the persistence context in that video right so basically transaction will be created and all the database operations will happen inside this particular transaction which will be managed by your entity manager and everything like transaction managers and everything comes into picture that we have already seen if you haven't seen that video I recommend you go ahead and check that you will have in-depth understanding of spring transactions so that is what is happening behind the scene when we actually ask entities to be persisted right now just to show you the example right i have this existing project again ecom application right if you see over here then we have this product service and in product service we have something called as add product uh, which will save inside a repository right now this is jpa we are using but internally inside jpa you will have something called as entity manager so this is basically internal method simple jpa repository and here if you see we have entity manager dot persist right so if you see over here this is basically entity manager that we are talking about over here right if you see over here it is actually calling persist and when this guy call persist after that all these things will happen these hibernate related things right all these things will come into picture the transactions the queries will be created and will actually hit the queries on your database like that it will happen right we are going to come back to it when we actually see the implementation right it is just a glance a kind of a trailer right so that is basically your jpa now let's come back over here to entity right so what is the life cycle of entity what all things it will go through right now let me just bring that up entity life cycle if you scroll over here then you will have it here right there we go i hope it is visible let me zoom it a bit so this is basically the life cycle of your entity right now these are the states of your entities right so transient managed removed detached 
and uh, this is basically the database this is not a state right transient is a state managed is a state removed detached all these are states right so whenever you create new entity right for example you are creating a new entity let's say you are creating it from a controller or you are creating it with a new keyword let's say so let's say here you are creating a new application right application means let's say job application right because when we are going to look into implementation we will actually see application management project right so job application management project so if you see over here we have already this application management system project created right but it do not have anything right we are actually going to write everything from scratch when we see the implementation but let's see now right let's say we are creating a new application now when we create a new application now let's say application is entity right for example let me just quickly create an entity for us over here what i will do i will just go over here create a new uh, java class right and let's say application or let's say applicant right applicant basically the person who is applying so that uh, this is basically the entity so applicant details we will store inside database let's say right so here let's say we we have few details so let me just add few details real quick so let's say we have id name email and phone number of this particular applicant right so this is basically the entity for us so this is kind of a entity for us right so basically uh, instead of application let's say applicant now since we have created applicant so let's say we are creating a new applicant right now this is the traditional way of creating an object inside java so let's say we are creating the entity like this for now right now the moment we create the entity inside the application it will be inside the transient state right this is basically the state of your new entity right now whenever this entity is in transient state it is kind of a fresh entity right so it is not managed by your entity manager yet so your entity manager is not managing it yet right so when your entity manager will manage it the moment you call persist on it right whenever i say entity manager dot persist it will be a managed entity managed by whom who manages the entity as we have seen entity manager manages it that means this will be now a managed entity since we called persist on it right so how this transition from transient to managed will happen by using entity manager dot persist as we have seen over here right so we have seen over here in this project if we have this entity manager dot persist right so whenever we call this the bean state will be converted from transient to managed right so, so now the bean is in managed state right and whenever the bean is in managed state it will be associated with persistence context that means this bean will be added inside your persistence context that's why this state is also called as persistent state as well as we add as this will be added inside persistence context so if you remember here we have persistence context and entity manager will usually interact with persistence context to get the entities right managed entities so basically persistence context will store managed entities right not all the entities but only managed entities which we want to persist right now when your entity is in managed state if you make any changes to that particular entity it will be automatically synchronized with your database it will be synchronized with your database and it will actually saved inside a db when we actually flush it that means when we do transaction commit right your transaction will be completed and your data will be added over here and if in case we are finding something we are finding a entity inside your database then that particular entity will be created and it will be in managed state right after that we have detached right we have detached state right now what is detached so the entities which are in detached those entities were once in persistence context but now they are no longer managed by your entity manager right so basically once you detach the entity or close or clear it will not be managed by your persistence context and will be in detached state right and if you want to move it back to in managed state then you will have something called as merge operation which you can do in order to move it back to managed state in order to make them manageable by your entity manager right so that is basically detached state right now the last state over here is basically removed state right now let's say when your entity is marked for deletion you have some you have this applicant entity which is marked for deletion but it is still inside your persistence context right and it is ready to be deleted once you commit your transaction once you flush it it will be deleted from your database right so once we call this remove operation your 
entity will be transitioned from managed to your removed state right and when we commit the transaction it will be removed from your database right so that is basically the entire flow so this is basically how the transition from each state will happen right so whenever you create a new applicant it will be in transient state when you call entity manager dot persist or save it will be transferred to persistent or managed state right once you call detach or let's say entity manager closes explicitly then it will be moved from this managed to detached state from persistent to detached state right or if you call remove function right remove function from entity manager on, on any entity then it will be moved from persistent to removed so like this right and it will come back to persistence from detached from here to here if we call merge method on entity manager right so that is basically how the flow of entity manager actually works right so that is basically overall life cycle of your entities right so that is basically it for this particular video so we have seen a jpa architecture and entity manager life cycle over here we have understood the basics of it now in the next video we are actually going to write the code inside this particular application so we are going to implement this application management system right we are going to create few entities we are going to uh, add repository by using jpa we are we are actually going to use h2 database in order to implement that and we are going to get our hands dirty with the code right so implementation part we are going to look into next video so just a quick glance or agenda of that particular video so we are going to set up this particular project so i have already uh, created a project over here i will highlight how to create that how we can create entities by using different annotations after that we will see how to create repositories what are different type of repositories inside spring data jpa we will see inbuilt methods for crude operations what all inbuilt method are provided by spring data jpa those uh, method we will see very very easy stuff after that we will see query method what exactly is query method we will see at the red query annotation so lot more things are coming into picture when we actually see spring data jpa and its implementation right so stay tuned for that video if you don't want to miss that subscribe to code snippet now so that's it for this video if you like the video hit the like button share this video with your friends so that they are also aware of jp architecture and entity life cycle that's it for this video see you in the next video